So, uh, this is uh, Tony Robertson. He'll be talking about the chameleon cosmology. This is sort of an alternative scalar field approach to gravity and space time. Mm -hmm. so, also uh, called by Glenn, so call me Tony or Glenn, it didn't matter. I really should retitle this to basically a common model for uh, space approach and science. Because really that's what I'm proposing is that to use this as a common model that we can use across the board for all the to bring all the theories that are out there into a common base so that we can then compare one to the other. And I think if you do that, you'll find out that a lot of these theories are the same theory <laughs> and just be being talked in a different way. Uh, the uh, chameleon cosmology was actually uh, uh, is, a, is a changing density field model. So I wanted to give a, a slide first to talk about what, what a density field is. Basically, the universe is density field. You can calculate a density for it, so and it's big, so it's a big field, so it's a density field. And then you can break it up into smaller densities and talk about smaller densities, you know, all the way down to a solid mass if you want to. <clears throat> so a density field can, can, can be solid masses, it can be solid masses with gases, uh, gases, it can contain anything, it can contain space itself. <clears throat> so the density field is just everything in the universe. And then I broke it up in smaller pieces. So everywhere in the universe is a density field. The fundamental theory, and I'm, I don't want to present my model as a theory, but it's based on somebody else's theory. If you pull the papers out, it has a Ligurian in there that you can go in there. <laughs> so it beats Lance's criteria. But I'm not trying to present a theory. But, they, uh, but, the, but, the, but the chameleon cosmology is a theory. Um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a scenario where the mass of the fields depend on the local matter density. <clears throat> what, what they came up with was uh, a scenario where you have, you have your density field, whatever it is. And, and in their paper, this would say be the earth inside here. And then about, about, about that density field, then you have a thin shell that, about that. And then outside that is everything else, the whole rest of the universe, basically. <clears throat> basically. And they came up with this formula where the thin shell thickness, they're given by this, and this little term here kind of confuses things. It makes it look like it's a change, but it's really not. Uh, in their model, this doesn't change. But, but if, you, you, if you look at this from Jim's standpoint, this is a, a Machian equation because this field is everything in the universe, and then this is your local field. So, so you're really saying that your thin shell is, is, is a function of everything in the universe. <clears throat> uh, and then basically this ratio of the thin shell to the radius of, of your matter density field is always going to be less than one. What's beta and beta? Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about beta. Beta is a coupling, uh, I call it a coupling factor. Uh, they call it a coupling factor, but in, a, in, okay. in their model or their theory, they set all these coupling factors to one. In, in my model, I, I let them change. And that's kind of the difference in the models. In the five? Uh, five <coughs> uh, well, you have to go back to the paper, but th that does have, it, um, it does mean something. I just don't remember right now what it, what it means. Uh, <clears throat> but I did the analysis. I had to find out what that was and make sure everything was right. Uh, well, actually, it's right there, isn't it? Uh, these little five. The little oh, these, these are the yeah. fields. The gravitational field? They're the density fields. What are the, is it a mass density or it, energy? Well, density? It, it's a mass density field. <laughs> you, you calculate just like you would any density. You, you, you make a big sphere around here. <laughs> And then everything, that's the dent, you measure the density of what's inside your sphere. Uh, next slide. And then uh, they have a, a force equation, a field force equation that they, they have here, uh, where this is the reduced Planck mass. This is the mass in question that you're looking at. This is the grading of the field across the, the mass to the outside world. And, uh, and then you've got a coupling factor. Wait, I won't. Went backwards there again. A coupling factor in here, which in their model or their theory, they always set to one. In my model, it'll get to I don't. These are your uh, equations for your fields, and uh, another equation for your fields. 
you really have to go, I'm, I'm not going to try to explain what they did. <laughs> so I, I suggest you go back to the papers and you, you read, read what all this really means. Uh, what I did is I took all that upper level <coughs> physics uh, about fields and converted it into a more engineering, understandable by engineers. So I took their field force equations, I found out what everything meant, and, and did the derivations on this guy, and you, you come up with uh, um, uh, the pill force just being six times your, your coupling factor, the, ra the ratio of the thin shell to your radius, and then the M times G, which is just really your Newtonian force. So you have a very simple, almost you know, MA type of equation that engineers can understand. Uh, what, uh, and then I uh, want to point out that the reduced Planck mass is just the Planck mass over uh, the square root of 8 pi. So really this is, is a Planck mass, um, uh, Planck type uh, scale equations. Uh, going a little further with the development of the equation, uh, yeah, going back and taking the parameters in, in the chameleon model, you can write the thin shell in this form, which is, uh, this guy kind of turns out to be what's called a co cosmological constant. It's, it's the, uh, I mean, the, it's the ratio of the cosmological constants over the uh, square of the Planck leg to the fourth root, and it's just a constant value. <clears throat> and then in this, in the paper I'm doing, I convert all this mess into one, one little term, which I'm calling K0. So your thin shell basically is K0 over the density of your matter field and the radius of the matter field. And, and then you can see that this K0 is, is just the density radius times the thin shell thickness. And then fr from uh, the uh, Comian cosmology, the field force is, is, a, is a subtraction from gravity, so it's already, uh, I'm not going to say the word, but it's a modification of gravity in the, in the opposite direction of gravity. So what we're trying to do already exists in nature, according to their, their, their theory. So, so, so basically, uh, what we're doing here is we're modifying this term so that we, we can go against gravity and create propulsion drives. The problem is, is they're, they're, the chameleon cosmology it's just a, uh, just an addition to gravity, and it's not an acceleration um, uh, uh, theory. So I tried to change it into a, an acceleration theory. <coughs> uh, this symbol, you're going to find some mistakes in uh, here because the computer don't convert things. Right? This is uh, <laughs> supposed to be approximately one. Uh, go forward. And so I uh, just want to explain a little bit difference between what I'm calling the modified chameleon model and, the, and uh, the cosmology model. And basically in the cosmology model, they're just looking at a small change uh, to, the, to the local, uh, to the gravitational field, where the, my model, uh, the chameleon, mo uh, modified chameleon model, uh, this word should be struck out. It's, not, it, 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 it's looking at the change in force on an object <coughs> in the local density field with the field gradients about the object and, and, and not held constant. In other words, in chameleon cosmology, they held all the fields constant. I'm letting them change. And because I'm letting them change, the, the thin shell changes also. And what I found, uh, the problem with chameleon cosmology was that their coupling factors weren't defined. They just set them to one and said, that's fine, it works out. And, I, and I'm saying, no, I said, they have to be something, what are they? And so what I found out was that, the, that the, the thin shell value for the Earth is actually very close to the square root of the Planck length times the uh, radius of the Earth. But what I found out is if I go out and look at other planets in our solar system, that don't work out. I also wanted to mention this is, this is an uh, equation to derive the Planck length, by the way. <laughs> and uh, it works out very well. In fact, uh, if you set um, the coupling factor in chameleon cosmology to about 0.98, you get the Planck length. So it's very, very close. Uh, so what I said is that... Uh, uh, that since the other objects in the Earth don't 
work out this way, that there must be another coupling constant that we don't know. So I said, let's make that a, a, uh, a, an environmental coupling factor or an external coupling factor to your matter density <clears throat> that, that changes your, your, your thin shell. And I, it's set to a square because it makes the math easier. Basically, why that is, but but actually, in some of the in some of the models, you can actually make because you're adding in that other coupling factor, you're ending up with a a coupling factor cubed, which you could think is a three-dimensional uh, coupling factor in a sense. Uh, and just uh, <coughs> and then doing the mathematics and everything, you find out that uh, the external coupling factor, the square of it, is, is just equal. So this stuff, which I showed you before, which is related to the thin shell, and since the for the Earth, your your external beta factor and the internal beta factor, coupling factor are approximately the same. I, I just said, well, let's let all of these coupling factors have this form. Uh, and in your different models, you may have to add little terms to it, but I just went ahead and gave it this form. I said, just assume they all had this form. <coughs> and then I'm. Um, since you're, I'm allowing the density field to change, it causes the thin shell to change. And so I try to set up a model where, where, where you're looking at the, the thin shell and how that, how that thin shell is changing. And I, I went and, and, and looked at the, the universe expanding. And I said, well, at the very edge of the universe, if you put a mass there, it's accelerating. Your density outward is going to be lower than your density inward. And if you go back to the mathematics, because the... Uh, uh, densities in the bottom, then a, if the thin shell gets larger, your density field on outside of that is getting uh, smaller. And if a thin shell is getting smaller, then your density field is larger. So the case at the edge of the universe with the acceleration is with the thin shell expanding out towards the edge, of, outward from the universe. That, so your acceleration is always going to be towards the, the thicker piece. It, it's kind of like the mass is trying to realign itself within the thin shell to the center, so it, it's trying to continually move <coughs> towards its center. And so basically I came up with this uh, thin shell change. This just means change. This means, this means it's not the same thin shell thickness back to the Canadian <coughs> model. Uh, it, uh, if, if people want to help me rewrite that to some other term, I'm fine with it. Well, I have a question to me. The uh, acceleration, accelerating expansion of the universe in a view of something is isotropic. And it's isotropic or about any other point you choose to take. How do you get the distortion that you have there that you're about to write down an equation for and all of that? If in fact the uh, distribution of the acceleration is isotropic? Uh. What, I've, what, what I'm doing uh, in here is, I'm not calling this density anymore. I'm calling it a density field. And as a density field, this actually becomes a function of, of both the, the matter that's in your density field and the acceleration of all the matter in your density field. But that's still isotropic about the Earth. Maybe we'll the when we look when you look, when you look, look, look towards the edge of the universe, if you look at the, the uh, density field behind the mass, it's all the mass in the universe and all the accelerations of the mass in the universe. And when you look outward from that expansion, there's nothing. No, there's <laughs> more universe and it's isotropic about that point. You're just in co-moving coordinates that relative to someone looking here on Earth or accelerating away from us. Uh, my assumption is that the edge of the, if you go beyond the edge of the universe, there's nothing. Yeah, but in relativistic cosmologies of the sort we're talking about, the edge of the universe isn't defined that way. It's the, the whole sphere, and there's stuff beyond it. Taking that to, as a point, uh, this is how I came up with the direction of the, expe the changing of the of the, uh, of the of the of the sh of the shell. And it, it, it seems to work out, uh, which I'll show you later. So that's how I decided the direction of how the thin shell is changing. <clears throat> whether, whether that thought process is right or wrong, that's how I came up with 
Uh, I'll explain uh, this equation a little bit longer. I just wanted to, wanted to put it here to, to relate it back so I could talk about this density here. Th this is actually an acceleration factor, which I'll uh, uh, talk about later. Uh, however, if you take what I just did and you put this in, in there instead, <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you what this is, then you have uh, your change of a thin shell behind your mass and a greater change of the thin shell in the front of the mass. It, you, it kind of looks like this guy here, <laughs> which is, everybody knows what it, it is. Uh, and I just given a little background, you know, so you really what you're talking about this, uh, what, what I'm, when I say this change of thin shell, what I'm talking about really is the change, in the, the full change of thin shell, you're extracting the front from the back and everything. And then you can take the, the equations I have and model it this way. So I don't have to really sit there and determine what the thin shell behind somebody is and, uh, or, or behind a mass or in front of mass. I can just say the, the change in the thin shell that's causing my acceleration is just a single term. Although I, I've done the mathematics this way too. Uh, so, in, now, so now we've got a, uh, a, a, a fill force term that looks similar to the chameleon cosmology, but I'm allowing the coupling factors to change and the thin shell to change. And, and I just re this, this the part is just the thin shell rewritten this way. So, so now you've got basically coupling factors to the three here, as I was mentioning earlier. And so you've got a fill force equation with the Planck length in it, square root of Planck length over the radius. And I put this bar here, and I'll explain a little bit later. This is no longer your ra uh, radius of your, ma of, your, of your matter field when it's stationary. This is the radius of the mass when it's m accelerating. Uh, and I've got an equation that shows that. <coughs> and this is just another way of looking at the uh, the coupling factor, the change in coupling factor, uh, where I've added this, uh, you have to add this motion factor in, 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 into the equations to get the answer that I did with my model right. Uh, the change in your density fill, which I've got an equation, I'll show you what that is. Your radio factor, which actually comes from the change of the, dens uh, the density fill, and I'll show you that equation in a minute. And so you're just rewriting the coupling factors uh, in a form where your thin shells and your coupling factors are changing. And I just wanted to point out that when a density field is ex uh, accelerate, uh, this um, coupling factor is, uh, is not equal to one, but if the density field is sitting still, it's one. <coughs> and uh, th th this equation did not come out of chameleon cosmology. It came out of the derivations of a rocket model that I'll, I'll show later. And I had, uh, th that when I change the density field using this formula, I get the right thrust out of the equation. So this equation was uh, derived by, by trial and error type of situation. <coughs> so what, see what it turns out is now your density field is a function of your, of your density when it's sitting still, plus the force acting on the density field uh, divided by the Newtonian force on the density field, which is mg, and your density field, and then, we're, then you can rewrite that to look like the mass of the field, a mass of the density field over the radial factor, and then you can get your radial factor then is given by this equation. <coughs> and then I wanted to just uh, sh show you some visualizations of, of the thin shell, both from the uh, cosmology, um, mean cosmology model and the change in density model and, and the uh, gradient fields between two masses. But what, I, what I noticed was that uh, there, the, in the human cosmology, the, uh, uh, the, the thicknesses of these, of these shells is, is of this form, which, which you have an R value here. So basically, if you started at the surface of the Earth, you could calculate a thin shell for every increment of R out away from the Earth. All way, and, if, and if the Earth was the only thing in the universe, then the, the, the universe would be this concentric rings all the way out to the edge of the universe. So basically, these thin shells is all the matter in the universe. It, 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 it's just all, it, but it's only definable around, around your defined density field. Uh, and then under the uh, changing density model, 
you, you, you have these shells that's going out to infinity that's changing in one direction out, out, out forever while contracting in the other, other direction. But what I w wanted to point out was that this was derived by using uh, the equation for the gravitational gradient around two masses that are close together. And the, 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 the gravitational fields uh, that are, um, gradients that are created look very similar to these rings that are being created with the thin shell model. Uh, so, so, there, so basically you could say that these uh, thin shells are just gravitational gradient, uh, pi pictures of the gravitational gradients. And if you have two masses, the, uh, the, the thin shell thicknesses would actually, between the two masses, would, would interfere and create gradients similar to this. And then I wanted to get off on a sidetrack. I did a paper uh, based on some work that um, Fontana did uh, on, on vortex, that he was, where he mentioned, was talking about the vortex text or, or, or a fundamental um, phenomenon of nature. And they were actually related to lifts of things like birds and insects. And I said, well, you know, if you treated uh, the, the, uh, the matter in the, in the, in the universe that's not solid as, a, as fluid like uh, Mahalik and, uh, and um, his counterparts keep talking about. And you assume that, uh, take the assumption that, that, the, that the, you would end up with vortexes being created behind that moving mass. Then if you do some, if you assume this thing is moving close to the speed of light, then this, this radial factor is gonna be tiny. It's gonna be real small. And then you, 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 you plot these uh, thin shell uh, as, as lines. Zero's mean really nothing, but would be circling around in a vortex here, then it would create an angular um, a mapping around the, around the back of the Earth. That uh, I'm going to go to the next slide. For it. That if you visualized it looking towards the mass that was accelerating, it should look something like that, which is basically the event horizon of a wormhole or a black hole, whatever, whatever you would, would want to want to look at it. But not only that, you would end up with also a similar effect way out in front of it. But, but, it, but uh, it's not completely circulated around that. <coughs> and so you can visualize this as, as a stable uh, wormhole opening behind the mass and an unstable wormhole opening forward of the mass. And, it, and, it, and it's logical because the, the wormhole that you form in front of the mass has to go away very, and very quickly as you go to stop, so it has to be unstable. <coughs> but the, thing, the real thing about it is that uh, a mass creates its own wormhole. <laughs> the, 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 the event horizon that you, you would normally think it goes into is forming behind it, and the event horizon where it goes out of in front of, is, is, is created in front of it, and they both dissipate as you, go, as you, as you stop. And this is just my thinking. It's the, 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 I can calculate what, uh, what this value is. I can also calculate what the distance between here and here is because that's really your thin shell thickness. <coughs> so, so some of these parameters are calculable. What's, uh, what's I don't want to say fictitious, but what's kind of made up is how these vortexes, are, do they form or do they not? And, and I wouldn't know that until I actually go out and fly towards the speed of light. But, but the model kind of suggests that this could be a possibility. That's all it's really saying. <clears throat> and uh, to, to work out the things that were missing in the model, I, I went out to, uh, basically, I'll show it a little later, but I went out to Sutton, sub, uh, elements of propulsion, and basically the first equation is a rocket motor equation for a solid rocket motor. And, then, and for a solid rocket motor, you actually have two density fields. Uh, one crap. Go back. Uh, one density changing density field, which is really your propellant leaving your uh, leaving your um, combustion chamber, and the other density field is the mass accelerating through the nozzle. So basically, what you what you have is, is that when the rocket motor is sitting on, on your test stand or your rocket sitting on test pad. You have your, your external density field, your, the density field of your rocket, and the density field of the Earth. But when you light, light the rocket off, a fourth density field comes into play because you're having a, a, a acceleration of gas through the nozzle. And, this, and, and if you put the accelerations of the, of the gases in, in the nozzle back into the equation I had earlier, 
th th this dentist field dominates the equations. However, you have to add this slight correction for this to actually get the right answer. Uh, okay, <coughs> I went a little bit uh, further and, and took the assumption that what's really going on when you're changing these density fields and, and with, the, with the thin shells is that you're having a time dilation effect going on too, which I'm not going <coughs> to really explain what, all, that, all what time dilation means, but the time dilation I'm talking about here is very similar to what electrical engineers use in their mathematics to explain a bunch of stuff. So basically what you have is a, a, a relaxation time term and a retardation time term which goes in the equation, it looks like this. And then I said, well, this is equal to the change in the uh, thin shell over, over the radial factor. Uh, and ignore this for now. But, but then from the rocket standpoint, I found out, and like again, this was some trial and error, that the, that the uh, relaxation time is really the radial factor of the gas times two over the velocity of the gas. And the retardation time is the exhausted mass over the, uh, uh, the, the um, mass rate uh, that you're going out. And you can put these back into this into the equation. You find out that this phase factor value takes this form for, for, for a solid rocket motor. And so uh, i explain it a little bit more here. I also found out that if I, if I set the, uh, I, I didn't need to use the equations. I, I, I found out that if I set the gas uh, radial factor to, to the square root of two times the nozzle, uh, radius that the uh, radial factor for the rocket actually turns out to be the radius of the throat. And I went a little bit further in a paper I did for Janif in 2012 and tried to make this look more engineering-like. I said, well, what is A in, this, in the thrust equation? Uh, this is just the change in mass, a burnout mass basically, times the acceleration at the burnout. So I, so I wanted to figure out, well, what is A from, my, from the modified chameleon model? And, and I did this in, a, like I said, a paper I did for Janif. And it turns out that uh, it's just the phase factor that I mentioned earlier, uh, it's cubed o over the square root of uh, the Planck length with the, uh, the two radial factors, uh, square roots minus each other, uh, with the gravitational acceleration of the Earth here. I throw this factor in, but f actually for the rocket model, it just turned out one, put one in and the answer comes out right. Uh, I want to point out that I don't, there's no other equation in the world that I know of for, for the rocket motor acceleration that has the Planck length in it. <laughs> and then in the Janus paper that I did, I did, did the calculations. And uh, th these are, you know, the, the, the nozzles and the throats. And I had to surmise these, but I used to actually work on a missile that was very close to these. So th these values aren't unrealistic. So you're giving all these values. So you calculate the burnout mass, you calculate the radial factor for, for, the, uh, for the gas going through the nozzle, and you can calculate your, your phase factor. You put that back into that equation that has the Planck length in it. And you calculate the acceleration, and acceleration comes out to this value. And if you go back to what's given in, the, in, in, in this uh, example from Sutton, then the acceleration of the rocket is the thrust divided by the burnout mass, which is at least, it's exactly the same. And, and really, the only real major thing in here that's really a, 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 a guess is the throat, and, and like I said, I used to work on the rocket model. That's not unrealistic value for the throat for this rocket. <coughs> and uh, open up that PDF now. I also did this rocket motor equation back with the coupling factors in it. Um, and I, wanted, I just wanted to point out that using all those coupling factors and driving the coupling factors and with the sums of all the cup, uh, coupling factors in, I did it that way too. And I did it that way the first time. And if you'll bring it up, I'll show you that. Uh, can you just go ahead and scroll it down a little bit? But, but basically, this is very similar stuff to what you got from what was given in equation. Go, go down because <laughs> just go down. Use the bar right here to go down. That bar is right there. Uh, yeah, keep, keep going down, keep going down. I keep going. 
okay, hold it right there. But you can see I, 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 I got all the coupling factors for rockets. Uh, th this is actually the acceleration factor. Uh, this is the, the coupling factor for the for the uh, the Earth basically for because of the Earth's density, and then these all the. Sorry, what is that? Acrobat. That's Adobe um, PowerPoint. This is Acrobat. Yeah. Sorry, bud. The main point is that if you do it with the coupling factors you end up having to calculate all these uh, uh, coupling factors. And for the rocket, you have to calculate it for the um, chamber where the exhaust is, is uh, or the uh, propellant is burning, which is your uh, combustion chamber, and the nozzle. And you end up with about six or six different coupling factors you have to calculate. <coughs> but if you do it with, uh, with this acceleration model, it's much, much simpler because all of those coupling factors are, are cause by your acceleration, so so there, so it, there, all those coupling factors are, are are built into this. In fact, if you know this, know the, if you know your acceleration, you can go back to all these equations and calculate all those coupling factors. So so this so so now go to the next. Uh, well, that's me going to the next slide. Uh, okay. So now what I'm proposing is is that we take take this this equation and use it as a common base between theories. And so you basically would have to do the same thing I did for the rocket nozzle. You go into your theory and you pull out factors and calculate these values until you get your right acceleration value. And, um, and, and you can, I went in a little bit depth for my, the paper that I sent out that apparently nobody read because nobody asked me about. Uh, and I derived this, so it shows that the phase factor can actually be looked at this way. And of course, this is that, uh, radial factor equation. And I wanted to go back to the uh, phase equation. I wanted to point out that these, these are actually uh, uh, frequencies. This, this, this is a time, or change in time, and this is one over the change in time. So basically, you know, one over the time is a frequency. So, so, ba so basically this phase factor is a quantum term. So in, in some of the models, some of the models like gems, you can go back to these are these are probably going to be the the uh, I'm guessing here, but probably the frequency of the power, and the frequency of the density uh, of the his piezo electrics that are changing. And I would also guess that his radial factors are going to be pretty similar to this. No, not gem. Uh, in the EM model or the EM drive model, these. These radius, since, you're, since it looks like a nozzle, <laughs> it, these are probably going to be pretty close to these type of values. Uh, uh, the, but when you go between two different uh, theories, you, you may have to add factors into this model. I'm not saying this is this that uh, I'm not saying this is absolute. I'm saying, you, but but it, but but once you can get parameters from your um, from your theory into this equation to get the right acceleration that your theory predicts, then you're saying that you're that you're changing the thin shell around your thrusting device, and so that you can utilize the model, uh, the, the modified chameleon uh, model, as a base for saying what's really going on in my system. You know, I, the, the, this is my defined uh, density fi uh, field that I'm operating on in my system. This is how the thin shell is changing. It, it, am I operating on the environment of density outside or not? <coughs> and so you can set up a common model between the between different theories into this model and then compare those two. And what, uh, what would really be useful then is that people in power who have money, when you come into them with your theory, they can say, well, can you put it into this form? And then I can compare you to the next guy that comes in, <coughs> type of thing. And, and, and plus, it gives you a common base back to <coughs> the Killian cosmology, which has a common base back, back to uh, Einstein physics, with Jim's exception. <laughs> uh, um, uh, so that's basically what I'm proposing is to not, I'm not proposing this as a theory, but as a model, a common model between theories. And, and it has a very logical base. It, it does need, as I point out to Lance, it, it, you do need to go back to the Lagrarian in the Chameleon cosmology 
and try to figure out how to rearrange that agrarian such that you end up with this changing, uh, thick, uh, changing um, thickness equations. And, and if you do that, you may find out that you have more parameters that I don't have in here that, that you can uh, look, look, that go back to your bases and, and utilize. <coughs> That's the last slide for this. Uh, I want to go to uh, the experiment slide. Good. Ask two questions at this before you go on. Okay. Um, can you go back and remind me where the plank length comes into the model or your modified chameleon model? That it came from me basically, but from the from what I did was. Uh, well, it disappeared. <laughs> what I did was, is, 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 uh, is I, I, tr I started sitting down and, figure, and, and putting a, uh, a, a spreadsheet together, the thin shells of the other planets in our solar system, and the sun and the moon. And what I noticed that, that only for the Earth was the, thin shell, the value of the thin shell equal to the square root of the Planck length times the radius of the Earth. And that was your... That was my assumption. Assumption. And, and so that allowed me to bring in the fact that the external coupling factors to the external fields for all other masses must be different. And so, so I wrote the, so I, so I then made this equation. Okay, just parenthetically, for the Earth, what is the thickness of the thin shell? It's about uh, 10 to the minus 14 meters. Okay, so a thin shell. Yeah, it's pretty and small. Secondly, uh, you mentioned uh, producing a force on a density field. Uh, and part of your description there was, if we apply, I think your words were, if we apply a force to a density field, is so, that well, correct? Uh, well, actually saying that we're calculating, we're calculating the force on the density field. And, and the, the, the force that you're acting on the density field it's not the force that, I mean, it's, I, I, I don't know what that is. Your theory tells me what that is. Okay, so I'm trying to wrap my head around the physical, dumb engineer's view. No, that's of fine. Force because on I, a field. Because I, I, won't, I want people asking questions because yeah. normally I get up and do this and I ask any questions and everybody says nothing and walks out the room. So <laughs> feed me back. I need feedback. Well, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I, I, tell I, me this is dumb, but tell me how to fix it. You know, that's what well, kind I, of. I'm just, Considering I, I can understand a force on an object and a field force, but a force on a density field, can you give an example or a, a, it, it just seems to be outside? Well, well, well Jim's, Jim's piezo stack plus the masses that you put around that piezo stack is your density field in his. It is. In fact, I think the box you put around it, you have to put into the density field too. But you have to define your density field. It's something you define what it is. <coughs> and you're saying that this, basically in the standpoint of, of uh, a space propulsion drive, your space propulsion, you have to, your space propulsion drive and your vehicle, you have to make that your full density field. So that, that, so that includes not only all the mass of your spaceship and your, and your engine, but the, but the voids you know, and the people and everything within that. What that does, it really only changes the coupling factors. I mean, you can take the engine and put it separate and do the same equation, get the same thrust, but what you've done, you've changed the coupling factors because you've taken away all that other mass. And when you add that mass in there, the coupling factors change to account for all that mass. <coughs> uh, so your density field, from our standpoint, is your space drive, is the, is the density of your space drive and it includes the air or, or vacuum around that. You just have to define what that is. And once you define that, what that is, then that, 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 that defines your coupling factors that you have to account for all that stuff too. <clears throat> I have another question too, if there's no others. <laughs> yeah, in your derivation of uh, acceleration of 422, I believe it was, um, that, that meant that it was uh, identical to a uh, standard derivation, um, you assumed a nozzle radius, um, that right there. Um, is, is that a standard, I mean, uh, a nozzle is a, has not yeah, this, a single uh, defined this, radius. This, uh, 
this example out of Sutton doesn't tell you what the motor is, but from the dimensions of it, uh, of it, it it's about the size of a side, uh, Sidewinder or an Adram or a similar type of missile. Uh, and I, 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 I worked on Sidewinders uh, in my past history, so I know what size they are. So, so I'm so so I can, so so given a sidewinder or even an adram, I, I I looked up what what the adram was too, and uh, and this is not dissimilar from the sizes of these rockets. They're small, they're not very big. Yeah, but, but the the, the uh, largest diameter of the uh, nozzle versus the throat uh, diameter is not. There's not a big variation between those two. So, regardless of which one you take. Um, it's not going to change your value too much. Mm -hmm. So I, I still find it surprising that it's so close. I, I did sorry. too. I did too. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, it's yeah. how it came out. You know? And like I said, I, w I was sitting here you know, changing this, changing that, and everything else, and these, and these uh, values just fell out. You know? so, and what, what's also interesting is, uh, is these radio factors. Uh, <coughs> These radial factors are actually the radiuses of the uh, interfaces where the gas is flowing between the density fields. So, if, so, so, so what it allows you to do from that standpoint, if you can define your, your space drive as two density fields with, with something moving between them, then, you, you can, then your, your radial factor is the, basically the radius of the area cross-sectional area of the where those gases are moving through. So you don't have to use these fancy equations to derive what these radial factors are <coughs> if you can pull them out of your system that you're developing. Let me... Yes? Uh, what will you answer to this uh, uh, point of view? And, and, and please don't take this as a criticism. I'd just like to have your point. I, I told you, you can tell me it's a piece of shit. Just tell me how to fix it. So, <laughs> it, uh, given uh, some... Uh, uh, parameter of full of data. For example, just, just as an example, before Kepler, we had all this information about the motion of the planets, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a model came out that it was epicycles upon epicycles that described very well the motion of the planets known up to that point. Mm -hmm. And every time uh, uh, something new was uh, found out uh, from um, astronomical observations, then more epicycles were added. And uh, so epicycles and epicycles, and if you look at how uh, uh, well it described the motion of the planets, it was, it was very good. Now, the, so I see that kind of a model as, as an analog to using coupling factors, where the coupling factors have uh, unknown uh, physical explanation, right? So that would be like an engineering approach, it's epicycles upon epicycles. Now, the, 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 to me, the true test of the theory is uh, not the model uh, based on these unexplained parameters explaining a given field of data, because we know we can always do that, mm -hmm. but is making a prediction that is outside the known field, field of data <coughs> and then seeing whether that prediction is verified. Mm -hmm. So it's a prediction that is outside our known field of data. So um, t taking for granted that we shall model using some uh, coupling factors of unknown uh, physical basis, you can explain known, known data. Does the theory make a prediction that's outside the, this field of data where you base your coupling factors and uh, what, what, is, what does it happen to your, uh, to your, to your theory based on what, what, what I have done is really just a basic um, analysis of what can be done for the rocket motor. And like I was, was telling Heidi, that there's probably at least 10 PhD theses, and that's one right there, that could be done against this model. I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, I'm an engineer. You're talking about doing a you know, full-blown theoretical physics analysis of, of this. I, I'm, I'm opening it up to the community to debate this by writing as many papers as they want to against this or, or for this, either one, what you're doing. All I'm trying to do is to present a common model that we can utilize to bring 
different theories into a common model. If you want to take this and run with it to show that everything in the universe works under this model, go for it. Uh, do the coupling factors uh, change for a different uh, kind of uh, uh, rocket propulsion? Um, from the standpoint of current rocket propulsion, from solid to liquid, the equation should be the same. That, that, that last one or the, uh, in the paper here where, with the accelerator should be the same regardless of whether it's solid or, or not solid. It also should be the same whether it's a, any system which you're exhausting mass, that should work. Okay, you said uh, you should, there, there it might, should be, but there, did, you, did you check that? Uh, no, I've only done one example because I work 40 hours a week and I've got plenty of other stuff to do at home and no one pays me to do this, so I just haven't had the time. It, uh, I would love to have a, a handful of students who would sit down with me and go through every rocket that's ever been made and tested for this model, which, which would make this look better, but I just haven't had the time to do that. Uh, uh, when you get into other you know, stuff like electric propulsion, you, you may end up changing some of the coupling factors because you might be affecting the external field, the external density field too. I also wanted to point out that this, uh, <coughs> that although most of what we're talking about is changing the density field in our space drive, which is inside the uh, thin shell, uh, uh, buoyancy would be a situation where you're changing the outside fields uh, not changing the internet. Uh, a wing, uh, a, a, a wing, for example, you're changing, you're getting a differential pressure from one side to the other that's changed, that one side's pushing the uh, uh, thin shell in while the other side is being expanded outward. <coughs> in the same, faithful, same way for a, a, uh, a piece of mass that's in the ocean where it's got a bubble on top of it, it's doing it up, the bubble is your expanded uh, 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 thin shell and then your pressure from the seawater on the bottom of it. So as a, from a model standpoint, where the, the equations may change between situations, between theories, but the model, sta the, the graphical model stays the same. There's gonna be some differences <coughs> in the shapes of your systems. I, this assumes that everything's spherical. So you have something square, you might have to have another factor in because of your geometry to get your, get your equations right. So, but as a general model, I also wanted to point out the paper that supposedly got sent out to everybody had a base on a, another, another paper uh, that came out on the archives uh, by a guy named Leonard uh, Suskind that talks about the fact that uh, wormholes and uh, are, ver are entanglement systems and that quantum physics can be tied to Einstein physics through, through this entanglement uh, effect. This situation is, is basically an entanglement system because if, if, if you assume that uh, the, the density field inside the thin shell and, density thin, and, and outside the thin shell are an entanglement system, then the thin shell provides the mechanism to keep the total system, to keep the total energy of the system conserved and the entanglement conserved. And that's not my words, that's out of this paper. Uh, but it, it, this is a perfect entanglement system. Just the way, it, the way this model is set up. Although, you know, the guys who did this didn't say anything about that. This is something that, I, that an assumption that I, I got from reading this new paper that came out. <coughs> In his paper, the thin shell basically is your, is your tunnel, your wormhole tunnel. And, and the two density fields in is your the place you started, the field you started in, and the field you're going to, and the, and the wormhole is your is is what keeps those two that keeps that system, uh, the energy in the system, conserved and, and entangled. Uh, I wanted to point that out.